people are finally getting what we've been, you know, screaming from the rooftops for the last, you know, 400 years. Um, and, you know, in, in a way, I feel like, oh, like, it's almost liberating, right? It's like, even though there's so much suffering and grief, and there's a lot of a lot happening in the in the face of this pandemic that is re reflects the disproportionate um, systemic forms of oppression that we suffer from. Um, I, I, I'm really kind of excited for this moment because it's an opportunity for us to do what we've always been doing. Like since the moment each of us was born, we were born into a body that was perceived as other, right? Or deviant or um, not quite right, you know, not the norm. And I mean, all of you are literally about to experience a practice. I know it's probably not the first time for many of you. So you come to your mats, right? To, re to get embodied, right? To literally take ownership of the wholeness that is your inherent birthright through an embodied practice. And we are, we are so powerfully resilient. Like, and, and it's just, that's just a fact, right? So for me, I feel like as a teacher, my, my, my highest intention is just to support us to constantly be cultivating the conditions within us to just keep doing what we've always been doing. Right, which is finding these magical ways to thrive um, in the face of all of this. And um, we are gifted with these practices um, that help us connect the parts of ourselves that have been fragmented or disconnected, right? Every time we wake up and move out into the world, right? It's like one thing coming at us after another, right? Trying to fragment us, trying to dis disconnect us from who we actually are. And so this is, I hope this practice this morning will just create the conditions for um, a deep, deep reconnection and knowing how, what a gift we are. Because we are, we are, we are a gift. And we are perfect and whole and complete. And, and these practices are just a way to continue remembering, remembering, remembering. Um, so we will move, well, it's mostly a Hatha practice this morning. I want it to be nurturing um, with some, with some hip opening focus uh, in preparation for probably what might be considered a longer meditation. Um, I feel like that's where the heart of it all really is. So um, I hope that'll work for you. I mentioned when, as some of you were coming in, that I, I suggest some blocks and um, uh, something to like a blanket to sit on, or if you don't have a blanket at home, a pillow. Um, and um, yay, so we'll begin. I'm, I'm gonna go back here now. Um, and if, for, if you cannot hear me, please um, come on and just tell, let me know that people can't hear me because I won't be able to read the chat from over there, okay? All right, uh, I'm gonna change it to speaker view. I can see what I'm doing. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to start in um, a comfortable seat. And I always like to start in the comfortable seat, right? Um, Sukhasana. Uh, which is not always comfortable for everybody's body. I know for myself, it took me many years to be comfortable in Sukhasana, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna guide you into it the way I like to teach it so that we're um, starting in the possibility of a hip opener in, in just a moment, okay? So take both legs straight forward. And I'm gonna mirror you for this moment. Uh, take your left ankle underneath your right knee. And then take your right shin in front of the left. So your shins are parallel to one another, parallel to that long edge of the mat, or, or, or the, the top edge of your mat, whichever that is. Good, and if your knees are kind of high in the shape, this might be a time to put a, a pillow or blocks underneath your knees so that your legs don't have to work too hard. And then from here, take a moment, just rock your body forward. And then rock your body back. And rock to the right and left. 
So you can just really feel um, what happens when you feel connected or disconnected from the floor. And then find a way to sit that you feel really rooted into your seat. So if you're lucky enough to have a lot of padding underneath you, right, you might release some of that padding so that your six bones can get more connected to the earth. Yeah. Good. And now take your fingertips and just gently touch your, your, your uh, collarbones right at the center. Touch your collarbones right at the center. Yeah. And just notice that line of the collarbone. You can start to trace it from left to right with your fingertips. And notice the, the gentle smile, right? That, that curve of the collarbone. Like we're born with a, a natural necklace, yeah? So trace the collarbone and let your fingers come all the way out to uh, the end, where they end, right at those arm bones, uh, uh, the shoulder heads, yeah? And then with your fingertips, imagine you're literally pushing yourself back in space, yeah? So take up space in the back. Good, and then keep that width across your chest, and then start to release your arms, just so they're parallel to the ground, with the palms up for the first moment. Uh -huh. See if you can keep the smile across your collarbones and then just rotate the palms down to the tops of your knees. Yeah. Right. Notice if your seat still feels heavy. And just imagine the ground is coming up to carry you so that you don't have to work at all. The seat, the roots of you can really let go. And then Allow your eyes to close if that's okay for you. If it's not, you can just take your gaze down in front of you. And take a moment with yourself. Just connect to what is right now. And notice that for many of us, that first moment of closing the eyes and asking ourselves to be quiet, it can be a little unsettling. It might be a lot unsettling. So notice that too. Notice what's arising. And you might already be noticing some parts of you that haven't been getting as much attention as they might need. And maybe even some parts of you that need some healing this morning, some, some nurturing love. And then take one hand to your heart, take the other hand to your belly. and press gently down into your body as if you are giving yourself an embrace with your palms. And take a moment just to observe the feedback of your breath as you breathe in, pressing into the hands. And as you breathe out, notice how it, the breath drops away. And do that for a few cycles of breath. In this moment, in addition to whatever other intention brought you here this moment, this morning, take a moment to note that whatever arises this morning on, in your practice, it belongs here. encourage you to give yourself permission to feel all that there is to feel. Gently 
release your hands and take your time as you gently crack your eyes open, reorienting to the room a little bit, and giving yourself permission to notice what's around you, to hear what's happening, the sounds in the room, the space. And see if you can keep part of your attention inward. Is there a way for you to be present with what is continually arising with yourself and what's happening around you? So from here, just gently take both arms out as you inhale, take the arms around and up. Mm -hmm. And then stretch through your fingertips as if you're using your arms to find more length in the ribs, the side waist. And then keeping as much of that length as you can, especially on the left side, release your right hand out to the right. Let that elbow bend and then find some, some real stretch of the skin on the left side. And notice if those collarbones want to collapse. Is there a way for you to keep them just open, smiling, widening from one end to the other? And then gently take your gaze down towards the right palm and let those left fingertips start to move over onto the diagonal. And we're going to draw a big arc, right? A big arc. And the right hand will start to draw that arc almost like you're just drawing an arc with the fingertips. And then we'll pause when you get right over uh, your hips. Mm -hmm. And just take a moment and wobble a little bit. Just rock a little side to side. And notice what's arising in the hips. <laughs> and then play with this idea of reaching your heart forward and notice if that shifts the sensation that you feel in the hips. And then maybe tuck your heart back as if it's trying to hide, like it's shy, and notice what happens in the upper back of the hips when you do that. It's almost like we're doing a little mini cat cow. Inhale, lift the heart, reach the chest forward. Mm -hmm. And then exhale, pull the heart back. But, and then start to continue that little arc with the fingertips, making your way all the way over to the left side. And we won't linger quite on the left yet. And then start to lift up. Then take both fingertips, tent them, take them behind you. And then squeeze your elbows towards each other. Right? So you might put a little bend in the elbows, squeeze them in, and then start to lift the heart. Let the heart fall back into the, the cradle of your shoulder blades as you keep smiling the collarbones open. Take a full breath in here. And a full breath out. Good. And then very gently just lift the head, lengthen back through the spine, and let the hands come to rest on the knees. Again, keeping the collarbones wide, close your eyes, taking a moment to savor or observe. Gently open your eyes. And we'll do that same thing on the second side. So inhale, oh, sorry. Before we do the second side, let's actually switch the legs <laughs> to the second side. Take your legs straight forward. And then this time, take your right ankle underneath the left knee. And take your left shin in front of the right. Flex at the ankles. There's a little activity in the legs. Good. And now snuggle your seat a little deeper into the surface of the, the uh, up underneath you and then inhale stretch your arms up get long 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 and feel as if you could literally create more capacity for breath just because of the way that you're moving with your body and right? we're creating the conditions to soothe ourselves by getting longer through everything but, and then see if you can keep that length as you gently release your left hand Bend the left elbow and reach up and over. Fanning the ribs open. Let that right hip stay heavy and see if that helps you create a little more spaciousness right in the very top skin above the hip. And then from here, take your gaze down towards the left hand 
and go really slow. Right? There's no rush here. The slower we go, the more we can observe. Start to walk your hands around, making that arc. Go slow. And then when you get to the center, right over the hips, play with gently lifting the heart a little bit so you can feel perhaps a little more sensation in the outer hips. And then tuck your heart back and notice how that stretches the, the upper back and the spine, but less the hips. Do that again. Inhale, lifting the heart a little bit. Good. And then maybe wobble here. Wobble side to side. It's like you're just snuggling in. You're getting really intimate with the shape. Good. And then very carefully, slowly, start to make your way all the way over to the right with that arc. Find the side bend to the right. And then start to lift all the way back up. Then take your hands behind you, tenting those fingertips. Squeeze the elbows in order to squeeze the shoulder blades and then lift the heart up from the back body and then start to open across the collarbones and as the heart lifts there's also this feeling of just being able to gently release and, and snuggle into the back body it has the support for the back and very gently start to lift your head lengthening through the crown. Take your hands back to the knees. Take a moment and observe what there is to observe now. Gently open your eyes. They were closed. So I'm going to reorient myself. Uh, most of you probably are already a long way on your mat, but I will continue. Um, again, mostly with a little hatha flow. And for this, we're going to start in Dandasana. So I actually like to sit in Dandasana with a little bit of height. So this might be a good time to use your blanket or a pillow. And I just realized my phone is not turned off. So let me do that. Okay. So find Dandasana. And even though it's a different shape, can you feel the parts of you that are coming into contact with the floor, finding their roots? Feel that heaviness. And then look at your toes, pull them towards your nose and spread the toes. How much space can you create between each toe? And for me, since I'm on height, I actually have to walk my hands a little further back so that the elbows are straight. And then from here, I'm just gonna gently smile the collarbones open and feel that feeling of lifting through the heart. And at the same time, allowing the heart to just kind of oh, be soft as it, as it, has, it has a support of the back. And then from here, bend your left knee and just yeah, bend it in. Yep. And then turn the left knee out and cross your left ankle on top of your left knee. Take your fingertips behind you and you're going to bend the right knee. So we're coming into a figure four. Um, and this is a slightly more intense version of that forward fold we just did. So just like we did a moment ago, maybe rock a little bit or wobble so that you can right, um, coax your body into a deeper version of this hip opener. And then make sure that as your hands or fingertips press down, that your heart lifts up towards, lifts up and forward towards the shin. Take a couple breaths here. Noticing what's arising. And then from here, uh, in, uh, Pretty gentle transition. You're just going to let those legs drop to the left, okay? And then the right knee is going to come right to the sole of that left foot. Point your right toes behind you, just so you're not twerking at the ankle. And we're going to come into a seated twist, a version of Bharavadrasana. So take your right hand outside the left knee. Keep your uh, ro uh, the left fingertips moving back. Take an inhale, lift the heart up. And as you exhale, just rotate. 
away from the legs. Keep that smile and the collarbones and the openness across the chest, but take your gaze back over the right shoulder. Take a full breath in here. And a full breath out. And then very gently come back, or, or before you well, yeah, come back to center, but take the left ankle just right into that, the inner edge of the right leg. And we'll come into a version of Janu Shashasana. This is still pretty early in the practice, so no need to go, you know, to your fullest expression of the forward bend. Coax your way in, maybe gradually coming closer with the, uh, the heart, bringing the heart closer to the toes. And then play with that lifting the heart, pulling the heart back, just so you can feel the difference. Right? What, what, how the shape changes with these subtle movements and how it causes a shift in what you observe in your own body, heart, and mind. Take a full breath in here. And a full breath out. And then slowly start to walk your hands back. Take your left hand outside the left knee and then reach the right arm up, press into that left shin for a little moment of stargazer. Mm -hmm. Good. You can let the head drop, press the hips forward, just feel the front of the hips opening a little bit. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And then slowly release the hips back to your blanket. Take both legs straight forward, Dandasana. Inhale, lift the heart. As you exhale, pull the right knee in. So second side now. Take the right ankle on top of your left knee. Keeping that figure four, take your hands behind you. And then bend the left knee, step on the floor with the foot. And find that little wobbling action. Use your breath as you gradually lift the heart closer to the shin and lift it up towards the sky. Take a couple breaths here. And then gently start to take the shape to the right. Releasing the right shin on the same angle that it was at. Take the left knee into the sole of that right foot and then point your uh, left toes just so that there's a nice long stretch happening on the top of that left shin and foot. Then walk your hands around. Left hand is outside the right knee. Right fingertips are moving back. Take a big twist, nice open body twist here. And then take your gaze back over the left shoulder as you're twist continues away from the legs. Take a full breath in and out. And gently inhale, come back to center. Keeping that right leg right pretty much where it is, just stretch the left leg long and then take your right foot inside the left knee. Tend the fingertips, smile the heart open, and then start to walk your hands forward. Janu Shirshasana on the second side. Coming forward any amount that your body will allow. Mm. Gently. Slowly make your way back up. Take the right hand towards the back and, uh, diagonal and then lift the left arm up. Lift the hips up, pressing that right shin into the floor. Left foot presses down and lift the heart into stargazer. We'll take one more breath. And then slowly descend your hips back to the ground. And then cross your left shin right in front of the right. You can move your blanket out of the way if you had it. 
Um, or if you're if you have sensitive knees, you can actually keep your blanket. We're going to come into um, cat cow, so feel free to keep your blanket. Um, and yeah, just roll over the legs, come forward to tabletop. Take the wrists under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. When your inhale comes, lift the heart, lift the tail, let the belly drop. And again, feel notice the shoulder blades moving in, the collarbones are wide. As you exhale, scoop the tail, dome the upper back, pull the navel towards the spine, let the head drop for cat. Uh, cat. We'll do that a few more times on your own breath. Inhaling into cow and exhaling into your cat. And if there's some other movements of the spine that your, your body is craving, feel free to make those moves. But make sure that you're moving in such a way that you can still observe your experience and hold space for whatever is arising. From here, curl the toes under and move slowly into downward facing dog. And this is the first down dog, so feel free to keep your knees really soft. The hamstrings are still in need of um, some love. You can also take your feet wide apart. Drive the hands down and forward as you squeeze the triceps to lengthen through the inner elbow and then let your head drop. If it feels okay, you can start to release the heels towards the ground and maybe press the thigh bones up and back, straightening a little bit more through the knees. Take a couple more breaths. And then from here, just inhale, come forward to plank pose. And we'll, we'll just hold this for a few breaths, just to create a little more heat. It's not a big uh, plank, chaturanga, up, down, dog, down, dog class today, but I want you to feel some heat. So see if you can really, really hold the tension of what is arising now. I just notice if the pitch in your body is getting a little more, hmm, heightened, <laughs> right? And can you use your breath and soften your inner gaze, right? Can you be gentle with yourself as the challenge increases? Take one more breath. And then as you exhale, start to lift the hips up and back. Coming back to downward dog. Then start to walk your hands back to, your, to meet your feet. Soften the knees a lot and let your head drop. Spike down through your heels and then hook the tail towards the heels as you slowly start to make your way up to stand. Coming into mountain pose, root through the feet, lengthen through the back of the skull, open wide across the collarbones and take a moment just close your eyes and notice how you feel now and gently open the eyes bring your legs together your feet together okay and then hug your left knee into your chest and notice what it's like to uh balance now, right? Notice what's arising as we shift the weight into that right foot. So feel free to keep the foot low if you are challenged by that balance and just play with picking the heel up and lowering it down, right? To any, any degree that your, your capacity will allow. Okay? And if your knee is high, you might just open it and take it right into tree pose, okay? Um, if the knee is low, open the knee and then just take that foot to the space just below the knee, right? Below the knee and above the ankle. So you've got some options for your tree pose. You can even take the heel to the ankle and put your foot, that left foot down with a little kickstand. Wherever you are, 
Bring the palms to touch of the heart. And take a moment with a steady gaze to just be present to what is happening in the foot and the lower leg. I notice the connection between the foot that's touching your thigh or your inner right shin. And then slowly start to grow your tree, reaching the arms up. Getting longer in all four sides of waist. And if you fall, just let yourself fall and come back. Now bring your palms and touch the heart. And then turn that left knee in, but and then step your foot down. Bring your big toes to touch. And then take your arms behind you and start to fold forward, almost like we're coming into um, Uttanasana, but we're gonna pause halfway for a little diver action, okay? So you can stay right here, right, with the heels rooted, or you can play with rising to the balls of the feet. Ooh, calf challenge. I went for a run yesterday. So like, a lot is arising. Okay. But notice what that is for you. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then slowly bend the knees, drop the heels, and then sink the hips down, finding Utkatasana. And notice what's arising now. And then exhale, fold forward over your legs. And this time, take your feet hip width apart, bend the left knee, keeping the right leg straight, and just walk your hands on a slight diagonal to the left. Let your head drop and reach up and back through that right sits bone. Notice what's happening now. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. And then walk the hands back to center. And then start to walk your hands. Uh, oh no, sorry, just kidding. <laughs> Spike through the heels and roll all the way up. Whew, I almost forgot about the second side. <laughs> Good, coming back to mountain. And then pull that right knee into your chest. Finding the steadiness or not in that left leg. Notice that there's a difference in the sides. And then from here, you're probably you're going to take the same variation of the trio that you did on the first side. Okay, so you can again turn that knee out and hook or put the foot on the inside of the thigh, the upper thigh, or the space just beneath the knee or uh, uh, ball the foot down, right heel into the uh, ankle. Bring the palms to touch at your heart and just take a few moments. So how do you nurture yourself when you're in a challenge? That's what yoga begins to teach us. How do we meet ourselves? Start to stretch the arms up if you haven't already. Getting longer. And then slowly bring the palms back to the heart. Turn that right knee in and step your foot down. Bring the big toes to touch. Take an inhale, lift the heart, and then exhale, fold forward just halfway coming into diver. So maybe keep those heels down. You did so on the first side, or maybe flirt with a uh, more challenging variation, lifting those heels. Take a full breath in, reaching through the chest. As you exhale, lower the heels down, sink the hips, reach through the arms, Utkatasana. And then exhale, fold all the way forward over your legs. Take the feet hip-width apart again. Bend your right knee. Walk your hands to the right, just slightly on the diagonal. And then lift that left sits bone a little higher to the sky. Feel the stretch along the left side body and the left hamstring. And observe what that's like for you. 
slowly start to walk the hands back to center, straighten through the, the leg. And then this time, look forward. Now we're looking forward. We're going to walk forward to downward dog. Reach through the heels, lift the hips high. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Now inhale, come forward to your plank pose. As you exhale, we're gonna lower to the ground, so feel free to drop your knees to the mat and make your way all the way onto your belly. Set up your hands for cobra. So probably walking the heels of the hands back to the, the floating ribs. Spread those fingers wide. And then before we do anything, see if you can feel that smiling wide of the collarbone. Again, <clears throat> and then imagine there are two little strings on the heads of your shoulders. And they're just going to float. They're gonna, those strings are going to lift the shoulder heads up. And you're already in the back bend here. So from here, anchor the hips down and then start to lift up using the muscles of the upper back more to come into either baby cobra or slightly higher cobra. And then once you're there, wobble a little bit. So rocking. And then see that your belly is really engaged here. Pull the navel towards the spine. It also helps to create a hooking action of your tail, like you're trying to bury your tail between your upper thighs. Maybe lift the chest up. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, press the hips back through a tabletop. And then lift the hips up, downward dog. Then inhale, come forward to plank again, and then slowly lower the knees down. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Help it forward if it doesn't go, okay? You want to make sure that the right heel is right underneath the right knee, okay? So you've got this vertical line here, okay? From here, pull your hips forward and down. Blocks might be handy underneath your hands for this one. And then you might just lift the heart up, keeping the hands on blocks. Same ideas, open across the chest, move the shoulder blades in towards the heart, or you might lift up, taking your hands off blocks, and then keep that scooping action of the tail as you start to lift the chest up and maybe extend the arms. All right, so deeper stretch in the front of that left hip. Good, take a big breath in here, and a big breath out. Take one more breath. As you exhale, release your hands. And then move your blocks. Curl the back toes under. And then pivot your back heel down. So we're going to come into warrior two. I like to take my right heel and intersect my back arch on an imaginary line. Okay? But you want to have um, uh, at least a either heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Reach the left arm forward. And then cartwheel your arms around and up. Ooh, for warrior two. Yeah. And then deeper into that front knee. And the deeper you go, right, you might notice the front knee passes the ankle. So you might need to widen the distance between the feet. So that right knee is right over the ankle. And notice what's arising now. <laughs> And can you be okay with that? Good, slowly straighten that right leg. Take your hands to your hips and turn your toes so that they're parallel and, and the feet are wide. Good. And then from here, open your arms wide, turn the toes out for five-pointed star. And even though the arms are on the diagonal, can you still feel the skin on the side body stretching open, creating more space for breath? Good, and then slowly start to bend the knees. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up for a version of goddess. Press the knees open. Good. Use the strength of the arms to get long. As the hips drop, the tail descends. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. Then slowly stretch the legs straight. Then take your hands to your hips 
Turn the toes back parallel. And then from here, squeeze the elbows towards each other, lift the chest, firm the thighs as you start to come forward uh, for Prasarita uh, for, for just a moment. Take your hands underneath the shoulders. Keep the, your uh, left foot where it is. Turn the right toes out just slightly on a diagonal and then bend into the right knee. You can walk your hands slightly to the right, but not necessarily in, to, to the direction of the foot, just on a nice parallel line to the uh, long edge of the mat. Reach the chest forward, take the hips back. Take one more breath, just observing. Good, and then from here, we're just gonna keep walking the hands towards the front of the foot. Find that uh, heel to arch uh, alignment or the alignment you had um, for warrior two. And I like a block for extended side angle or Karso Kanasana, okay? So feel free to take up that block again outside the right foot. We're gonna do the variation with the block outside the foot, then deep into the front knee. And then roll the top shoulder back, opening across the collarbones. Good. And then from here, rotate the left palm up to the sky. Okay? And then slice the pinky edge of your hand forward. And when it's right alongside your face, pause. Okay? Now, see if you can keep that um, directional uh, angle of the arm. So the arm is externally rotated. And then reach those fingers forward and take the arm above the left ear. But now, just at the last moment, just rotate the palm down. Good. Drive the back foot, the outer back foot, deeper into the mat. And then see if you can spin the right side waist up towards the sky a little bit more. Take one more breath. Ooh, and then exhale, release your left hand down. I turned off my AC for y'all, so it wouldn't make so much noise. I'm sweating over here. Okay, and then frame the front foot, lift the back heel, and step it back, downward facing dog. Let the head drop. Take a full breath in. As you breathe out, let go of what you might not need as you continue observing this constantly fluctuating, shifting state within you. Now inhale, come forward to plank pose. Drop the knees down. We'll do the same setup to the second side. So step the left foot forward. Okay. And then from here, pull your hips forward. Okay, so make sure the knee is over the ankle again. Pull the hips forward and down so there's a really clear sense of, well, clear sensation in the front of the right thigh. Maybe hands will go on blocks and they'll just hang out here, lifting the chest as the hips descend. So this, is a, this can be a lot, right? This is a lot. So feel free to stay here, smiling those collarbones open, or start to lift the chest off or the belly off the thigh. Mm -hmm. And then just send the hips, scooping the tail under. And then inhale, stretch your arms up. Finding a back bend and a hip opener here. Take one more breath. And exhale, gently release your hands. Just moving the blocks, let me keep one here. Curl the back toes under. And then pivot the back heels out. Again, front heel, front or back arch alignment, setting up for warrior two on the second side. Adjusting the feet. Knowing we're only going to be here really one time. Allow yourself to be challenged because really we know as, as these moments that we're in right now in our world, we only meet ourselves when we're uncomfortable. <laughs> Right, that's how we come to really know who we are and what we're made of. And we really start to cultivate that internal capacity, our internal resources to thrive, even though we might feel overwhelmed. Use your breath, soften the gaze. Take one more breath. And slowly stretch that left leg straight. Take your hands to your hips for a moment. Turn the toes. All ten toes are parallel. 
Now to the back edge of the back, and then turn the heels in, toes out. This time we'll do goddess, but we'll scoop the tail and make a nice gentle, almost like the arms are an extension of the collarbones, make a big smile with your upper body. Let the head fall back. And just notice what there is to notice now. Take one more breath. Slowly stretch the legs, hands to hips, parallel the feet, squeeze the elbows. As you inhale, lift the chest up. And exhale, fold forward over those legs. This time we're gonna turn the left toes out just 45 degrees, keeping the right toes parallel. Bend into the left knee, and then maybe walk your hands slightly to the left. Keep taking the hip creases back as you reach your heart forward. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. Good. And then slowly start to walk your hands forward, pivoting on those feet. And then setting up for extended side angle on the second side. So hand on, probably on the block for most of us, outside the left foot. Take your right hand to your right hip. Find that deep knee bend into the left knee. Hook the left butt cheek underneath you to help you roll everything up towards the sky. Smile the collarbone open. And then take your right arm this time. Rotate the palm up towards the sky and slice through the air with the pinky edge of your right arm. Keep slicing, bringing that arm forward alongside your ear. Keep it there, but then just rotate the palm down. Drive that outer right foot down, the right heel down. Take a full breath in and out. And take one more breath. And then gently release your right hand down. Lift the back heel. Step back, downward dog. Full breath in. And a full breath out. Slowly lower the knees to the ground. Open the knees wide. Point your toes and start to sink those hips back towards your heels. And find child pose, taking the first few moments maybe to wobble again. Mm. Walk the hands back. Take your, let's say, your right ankle on top of the left. Roll over the legs. And then come to sit in Bakasana. Uh, not Bakasana. <laughs> um, um, uh, Bada. Oh my God. Bada Kanasana. Yes. Bada Kanasana. <laughs> yes. So bound angle. Okay. Feel free to sit on a blanket. Okay. I like to sometimes rock a little side to side and release the flesh from underneath me. This is, hips are hard for me, so that helps me. Tent the fingertips, and then press down into the fingertips as you lift the heart, and then feel the, the shoulder blades carving from the back to the front to open the heart. And let the heart fall back, smile, collarbones open, maybe take your gaze up. and then gently release. Take your legs wide apart. And again, sitting on a blanket is really handy for this, this um, uh, final forward, uh, forward bending sequence. Inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, start to come forward any amount. And at some point, you might come so far forward that your hips lift off the ground. So keep them rooted. Keep the steadiness in what's touching the ground. Flex at the ankles, spread the toes. And then take a moment to find that gentle cow with the heart reaching the chest forward. And then pull your heart back as if the heart is like hiding away in, a, in the cave of your chest. Inhale, lift the heart, open across the chest. Maybe rock a little side to side. And then come forward any amount. We'll just hang out here for a few breaths. So whatever feels good. You might even rest your forehead on a block.
Take three more deep breaths wherever you are. Slowly taking your time, make your way up. And we'll come to sit. And we're going to sit for a few minutes in meditation before we come into Shavasana. So um, for this, if you know that you need lots of props underneath you to sit comfortably for hmm, five to seven minutes, do that. If you know that sitting for five to seven minutes on the ground is not available to you, sit on a chair, okay? So just grab a chair. So I want you to feel comfortable here. And for me, again, I like to move the flesh from underneath me. So I really feel rooted into the support of the earth. Rotate the palms up for this first few moments. And as your eyes start to close, Start to observe the conditions that you have created for yourself. Through movement and breath, through contracting the muscles and stretching the muscles. Just notice how, to what degree more at home you might feel in your own skin. This is why we practice yoga. It is so easy to forget. We cultivate these embodied practices. These, we cultivate these resources that we are born with. It's crystal clear. Thank you for muting yourself. Um, yeah, so just notice that, you know, this is, this is, you did this. Okay? Sometimes we think that we need a whole bunch of stuff to feel good or to remember who we are. And, and all, we need, all we need is some attention. We just need to move and breathe in a way and be with ourselves with attention, with respect, Passion. So we're going to sit and enjoy the space that we created. And if it helps you, if focusing on something, because in a moment I'm just going to stop talking, but for some people that can be triggering, right? That can actually uh, be a little, it can start to disconnect them from themselves. So I'll give you something to do um, that'll keep you connected to yourself. And it's your choice how you use the time. But one of the things I like to do is to take one hand to my belly. And with the hand on the belly, getting that kinesthetic feedback of the breath, I just gently put my attention right where the hand is and watch the breath. And at some point, something will pull your attention, right? You'll, you'll get dragged away by a thought or a noise in the room, maybe a child in your household, something will pull your attention away. And when you get distracted, just take your hand off your belly. Right? Like you're, oh, I got distracted. And then re-anchor your attention onto the breath by bringing your hand back to your belly. Your hand might wave a lot and that's okay. The intention is to become aware of when we get distracted, when we get pulled away from ourselves, and to keep bringing our attention back.
notice that your attention has wandered off. You can gently bring it back for these last few moments to the breath, to the body, to what's happening right now. is on your belly, and gently release your hand to your knee. Gently crack your eyes open. And now we rest. So find a comfortable reclined position, and you can feel free to take a restorative posture. I actually have my bolster here. I often up my knees and, and when I recline so that I can have a little a gentle release of the low back um, but start to transition um, and I'm gonna actually come forward again a little closer to you I will rest but um, I'll, I'll get to talk to you and see you resting <laughs> um, but make yourself comfortable Once you're reclined, allow those parts of you that are coming into contact with the ground to get a little heavier. Release the skin on your forehead. Release your jaw. Release the root of the tongue. And in this gentle state that you are in, maybe allow or invite some of the qualities of being that you're starting to understand are really who you are. Like can, you, can you plant those qualities into your body as you gradually relax? A little joy in your face. Maybe it looks like a slight smile. Allow your shoulders and the back body to soften. Maybe planting the seed of pride, self-respect and love. Allowing your breath to come back to its natural rhythm. knowing that you don't have to do anything to breathe, right? It happens automatically. There's no effort, no restraint required. So perhaps planting that seed of trust and faith into the belly.
Allowing your legs, your hips to get heavier. Allowing yourself to take up the space. Planting the seed that I am worthy, I belong here. Do you have any idea what a gift you are? Do you have any idea what a gift you are? Begin to deepen your breathing. Bringing some life back into your body. Take in your time, because there's no rush. You're at home. <laughs> you can turn off your video and just chill if you really want to. So allowing your body to gradually come back to life. And when you're ready, you can gently draw your knees into your chest. And pause and give yourself that, that gentle hug. Take your time as you roll to the right. Pausing to snuggle up against the earth. Another reminder that the earth is a powerful resource for us too. Remembering who we are, the land that we come from. And then gently make your way up. You can keep your eyes closed if you'd like. Just take a moment, just one final moment here to savor. And bring the palms to touch at your heart. Bow your chin to your chest. in gratitude for the gift that you are. This, the gift of this wonderful community was created for this space. And even the gift of our suffering, not because it's necessary always, but because it directs us to where we need to grow. And frankly, the gift that we need to be and are have the, we're poised to be for the deliberation, the delivery of this world into a version of itself, a rebirth of this world into a version of this self, of, it, of, of a world that we can actually all live in. Take a full breath in. And exhale your air. And gently open your eyes. 
So in my family, we would say, Om, peace, bliss, amen, ashe. <laughs> um, and so I say that to you now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I'll hang out if you have any questions. I went over, even though I had my timer going, like somehow I still went over. But if you have any questions, I'll just sort of hang out if you want to chat in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, yeah. So good to see you. Hey, Crystal. Bye. Bye, Mamta. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.